Good Titans, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back to League Unlocked. Eric and Mark here with you for the first weekend where we've got a full slate of games. All four major regions now underway with day one of the LPL kicking off on the Monday, which I mean, you can't even fit all the games in an episode now. Uh, yeah. Well, it feels like last week was the continental breakfast of, of opening weeks because we only got the little bit, just the essentials that you got to get through. Now it's the full buffet. We got the omelet bar rolling. We got the pancakes and the waffle station. LCS, LEC, LPL, LCK, all of them are rolling. It's your weekend recap. Which means you're sticking with the cream of the crop. The best first from that buffet, which means, yes... We got to check in with the Cloud9 boys, the new era with Jojo Pion on the squad, Vulcan returning, and let me tell you, uh, 3K almost gold differential at 15 over these two games. They were absolutely annihilating, and it felt weird seeing Berserker on the squad kind of just going through the motions being like, huh, I guess I don't have yep. to do much don't have to do much when the power level of the rest of cloud nine is operating at a different stratosphere than the rest of the lcs and especially with the stability of fudge on tanks in this yep. meta in an early part of the year you can roll through it with a power like jojo pion pushing that engine to the next level this is the dream debuts that you talk about when you're joining a new organization, what you want to do, how you want to be an impact player, how you want to showcase exactly why, number one, this team saw that, you know, there's something special in you, wanted to invest in you. And number two, send a message to the rest of the league that now you are here, you are going to be a problem to deal with. And this Cloud9, everybody already knew they were going to be a problem with how powerful and how much of a threat they are at the top of the LCS. These two completely throttled games from them, absolutely seeing them right at the top. And it wasn't just JoJo hitting the ground running, him paired with Blabber. Blabber back to back, a Zin Zhao and a Viego game, both looking like he's peak MVP form himself. And the meta right now is right into Blabber's wheelhouse. Something like that Jin Zhao, as you mentioned, is going to be a terror for the enemy team to deal with. Something that we know the aggressiveness of how Blabber wants to play, how he wants to set things up, how he wants to start these team fights is going to be an advantage for this Cloud9 team. This is, to me, an 11 out of 10 on the board for C9 at a week one. Yeah, we know Blabber's at his best when the champions he's playing can only go in. There's no escape plan. <laughs> you got to fully commit to go in. Obviously, JoJo is psycho enough to be following him on that path. They are absolutely the team to beat. Complete only two games in, but the main rival so far, other 2-0 squad looking like FlyQuest. I mean, both Bwipo and Inspired a year away from the pro scene. It looked like you were dropping them both in a week after they'd both been playing. It, they look like they've missed absolutely no time. And you love to see that because this is great. Not only did you have uh, Cloud9 with the 11 out of 10 weekend opening impressions, all these things smashing out the expectations and hopes that everyone had for that big roster. And here comes FlyQuest to rise up as that challenger early in the season to show us. And it is that veteran trio in that top side really leading the way for this team. But that doesn't mean you can discount that rookie, you know, rookie bottom lane, the rookie in the ADC position. And of course, Mr. Busio coming back for the sophomore year. This is a squad that I think will be that that thorn in the side, that one that can rise up to the challenge, or at least at the very least so far in the LCS, that what a top team like Cloud9 is going to represent. Yeah, and we're obviously going to see the AD carry meta change quite a bit, yes. I think, throughout spring. So... Masu's going to get the opportunity to not just be on Senna duty every game. Yeah, you better believe that that ADC meta is going to change and we're going to see him on something else. We're getting next week. We're right on to the next patch for the LCS. Crazy, it doesn't man. stop. We're hitting it. We're moving on. You love to see it in the LCS. And you better believe that's going to give us a fresh little sprinkling, a fresh little change to the meta. And for a team like FlyQuest, with a lot of those creative brains there, you best believe we're getting something new. And, you know, very early reactions from this new look LCS. Sounds like the pros are interested, intrigued by, you know, how the drafts change. And you're doing it before the games in uh, your little green rooms. And Jensen talked about 
Uh, the matchup against the Shopify Rebellion, where Insanity's pulling out Zach Mid and just wow, Zach Mid. Okay, well now that we got time, Whippo, let me one v one you in that Zach Mid matchup, and you're able to do that when you do these drafts. It seems like cheating, but if both teams are able to do it, I mean, it's definitely different. It is something that you know I don't I don't think anyone really thought of maybe when we were coming up with the ideas or discussing about that this is what's how we were going to change around the broadcast and this is how draft is going to go that's an extra advantage an extra little wrinkle if you have that time and i understand it's provided to both sides is the situation here where it's not necessarily oh you have this advantage over the other type of thing now but you do have that advantage compared to the past. If you do get that little bit of practice, a little bit of a warm up and exposure, it's not necessarily that cold shock right into one of these crazy pocket thick matchups or wacky meta or something. You get these opportunities to say, oh, I get like at least two, three minutes to get a little flavoring before I got to jump into the real deal. Problem is you're going to get comfortable with that. And then you go internationally and you go, oh, Oh. They picked Zach Mid. I'm right into it. I'm playing. There's no time to study this one. So we'll we'll have to monitor, see how this uh, impacts the LCS domestically and internationally as we move on. LEC rolling into week two action. Get the G2 versus G2 matchup because Team Heretics is G2 1.5. And current G2 says that Seraphine, Senna bot lane, they wanted absolutely no business with it. Didn't even just ban one of them. Banned both of them get them off the rift which means unfortunately you're left with Jin getting picked into a Cassante. oh no and it feels awful <laughs> even if you hate Jin, you probably didn't enjoy seeing it that one because it was just boring to see him get stonewalled like that one from a Cassante. there's nothing the Jin pick could do and i understand as you mentioned really is one of those situations where things were banned out the ideas the you know strategy was taken away from team heretics you want to see them do better. And I, I mean, it probably really wouldn't have mattered because G2 was kind of just outclassing them uh, across the board, especially, my God, sophomore slump. It's a sophomore resurgence or just surge out of yike. 15 out of 16 KP on the Lilia pick. He continues to just be absolutely obliterating the whole league. He's only getting better, more experienced, being more comfortable, not only with the G2 situation, the situation around the LEC, and then the growing situation of realizing you are a rising star in the world of League of Legends. And I think someone like Yike has seemed awfully comfortable doing so and continues to excel in his progression. He's really going to become the face of G2 at this type of rate. He's already been the most consistent best player on the best team for now almost a full calendar year so still for such a young player on the big stage absolutely incredible career climb that he's had and showing no signs of slowing down here early on in winter nobody's slowing down bds right now either four wins in a row after dropping that season opener against g2 so they continue i mean udir tank meta how do you take down Udir? I mean, Adam, he hasn't even had to play the Darius or the Garen or anything, but these are perfect picks to just annihilate Udir. Oh, God, he's got to be waiting for it, or he's having the time of his life in scrims, just eating up those type of champions with his gods. But the story really isn't Adam this week from BDS. You got to be looking down, I think, for me, into the bottom lane, and specifically our boy LeBrav, because there is no way we're not talking about some of those hooks that he was landing. Game changers. Yeah, that was an absolute uh, blitzcrank clinic, just rolling around through every lane, getting these hooks over the walls. And honestly, I feel like Blitzcrank gets a huge buff from all these terrain changes. There's so many other walls he can be hiding behind now to hook you over. My God, it's impossible to keep track of him. And as everybody that has played any little bit, even if you've just played a Ramsey, heck, even if you've just played against the bot type of situation, you know how lethal that one blitz hank, blitz crank hook at the right time can be in a situation. Now, as you mentioned, you have the changes around the map. You get a little bit more creative, a little bit more options. This is what we talked about with the changes to the map. Even if they seem small, they can have big impacts with the right champions and the right mindset to take advantage of it. And, you know, Blitzcrank's a guy you can miss 99 hooks in a row, but if you hit that one 
on the key guy at the end of the game. And LeBron wasn't even doing that. He was hitting hooks throughout the entire game. So, yeah, it very much is about everyone other than Adam so far that's really been... I mean, Adam's been fine. Nothing to complain about. He's actually dying way less randomly than we're used to seeing. He's just holding his own, doing great. But, yeah, it is the rest of the squad that we're getting consistency out of and still waiting for BDS to hit, you know... The bigger hurdles, the bigger matchups in uh, that final week and the final day of week two action. But so far, four in a row. Things looking good. Feeling good about them. Feeling a whole lot better about them than a zero and five Carmine Corp. K Corpse is maybe the greatest meme name for this squad. And that latest matchup against Team Vitality, nothing looked more obvious than a 9 10 matchup than that game. Oh, that was not a fun one to be sitting through and see it's logged through the way that it was. It's not looking good for Karma and Corp. And it's one of those situations where last week we talked about it. We looked at the week and we saw their game performances. They were competitive. They're right there. We saw that there's an opportunity that you hit the ground in game two. You know, see week two, you hit it, you made all the changes and maybe you see the reaction go through and you get it all the way and you get that rebound. Not the rebound that we were looking for for Carmine Corp. I think the only player that actually did maybe continue that type of play from last week and maybe step it up is Bo individually in the jungle. Everybody else, I think, took a step down this past week, which was not the answer. Yeah, really what this Vitality matchup made me think is, can we get Bo and Viteo on a team? Can we, can we stick these two, save them from what's going on uh, between these two squads? Yeah, we were saying the 0-3 start, K-Corp. Yeah, they had a tough schedule and there were positive signs. Then they start this week with loss to Giant X and Vitality, who are looking like bottom three teams so far. And, I mean, 0-5, even if you win out from here, that's pushing you down lower in the standings. So, I don't have faith in this version of them winning four games in a row either, that's for sure. It's a very, very dire situation for them in the winter split at this point. And it's one of those ones where, again, it's so important in this LEC to at least make it into that next stage, not be the first two that are going to be ousted at this point and then go back to the sidelines. You know, maybe if you are Carmine Corp and you say we've got a lot of things to continue to work on and get better and improve on, you can use that time away from the stage and away from the pressure and the, and the eye prying eyes and all these type of things but it's got to come at some point. And I think that right now, at this point, if they're not getting the win today, when this is getting uploaded on the Monday, it ain't looking good for winter. Yeah, you're calling it a must win because you can't go 0-6. You need some bit of positivity to come your way heading into that final week uh, of winter action. So dire straits for them on that final one. Um, LPL debut didn't happen over the weekend. But on the Monday, we got... They did it right. They got some bangers on the rift, especially BLG versus Top Esports. And it's been so long since we talked about roster rumors. Even seeing some of these lineups in the LPL, you're like, oh my God, that's right. Knight is on BLG. Okay, right. That's that's the new era we're entering. And he did not miss a beat on the AD LeBlanc. We also got treated to a little brand jungle out of Jeune. Okay, letting the guy cook. Yeah, BLG cooking up some spice on that opening of the LPL. It's crazy to think about because something like this is a monumental change. Monumental shift is uh, Mr. Knight heading over to BLG and everything else happening in the LPL. But it all happened and all those rumors happened right away after Worlds. And it went into hibernation mode and then everything rises up with the other regions. You forget about it. And bam, you get sucker punched right into the mouth with the haymaker that is BLG and realizing, yep, we're gonna be talking about BLG a heck of a lot this year because this team is the real deal elite of the LPL immediately on opening day. And it still took, you know, three games. TES had some avenues, Jackie Love on the Callista now paired up with Mako. Really excited to see that veteran bot lane get going. Cream was definitely outmatched pretty much all three games. But listen, he's going up against Knight, who has been the best mid laner in the LPL for many splits now, you know, compared with a guy like Scout. He's been at the very top. So got to see Cream against some other mid laners before you're fully judging this guy. Yeah, it's certainly one of those situations where, number one, it's a step up for him playing on top esports and taking over that role in the mid lane position and the aspirations, expectations, 
for this roster, what is possible, the potential, all these type of things. And then you add in that individual 1v1 matchup, which is Knight, which unfortunately, even as much as I like Cream and how much he's improving as a prospect in the LPL, he's not a Knight. And that is the end of the story in that type of situation. BLG, they take this one, yes, ramping up into that third game. I think the rest of the changes with top esports we're going to see through time is going to prove to be one of these, uh, you know, upper level teams in the LPL. But right now, right out of the very gates, it is BLG at the top. And with all the changes coming to JDG, feel like BLG should be those spring favorites because all they did was swap out Yigao for Knight, which on paper should be an upgrade. We'll see what the inner workings are, but they're at the very top in terms of favorites heading into this spring split. The other matchup, a rivalry as old as time, RNG versus EDG, but it's a little different in 2024 because these teams are not at the top of the table anymore case in point this third game yeah you ever have a snack that you used to love so much and you're like man this thing oh the spiciness of it oh it's so good it's just it's just right and then you know it comes back to you like another five years later it went away for a little bit and you're like oh they brought him back this is great Ah, it doesn't taste the same. That's what this RNG EDG was. It didn't have the same level of hype, didn't have the same level of elite performance that we usually come to expect from this type of rivalry. Still, some reasons to be looking into these teams. I'm looking at my boy, Mr. LWX, and seeing what he can do. Happy to see him out of the prison cage that was FPX and same with, I mean, Ming is still trapped in RNG jail, but at least he's <laughs> playing now, and at least he's playing. That bot lane is a reason enough to be excited about RNG. I know Wei had a rough day on the Vi, oh. uh, even though they picked up the win, but I still think this RNG squad could be a dark horse to make a playoff run. Yeah, there's gonna have to be some growth, and there's gonna absolutely be some beatdowns that are gonna be coming across RNG, given how top heavy we know the LPL can establish itself as. But you look at this roster, you realize some of the players, as you already mentioned, that bot lane, LWX and Ming, and what they're gonna be able to cook up and build together. And then even in that top side, Bree is a guy that I think a lot of people forget about and what he's capable of individually one of the top top laners that you've got in the lpl a top-notch option and i think with the right conditions with the right performance going on with the rest of the team he can capitalize on that and make that push for rng in the playoffs if you're a big fan of the lpl put the buckles on because it's it's non-stop for a while they're going seven days a week until that lunar lunar new year break for a couple weeks but it's I feel like the schedule's even more jam-packed than what we were getting last year. If if you've ever been lucky to go to a theme park, either as it's, you know, kind of winding down for the day or at the very beginning of the day, or maybe it's an off day, everyone else, that, you know, all the schools are in, everyone's at work, whatever type of situation, and you get to go on the roller coaster and you ride it, and they go, ah, no one's in line. You guys want to go again? Absolutely. That's the LPL this week. It is just roller coaster, roller coaster, roller coaster ride. It's not going to stop until we hit that Lunar New Year break. Even when the bolts are starting to get a bit shaky on the track, they just power through. Keep on going. Keep on trucking. That is exactly what KT Rolster did in what I'm going to call series of the year so far. You know, we're a weekend to most of these seasons. But KT Rolster versus D plus Kia. Absolutely. This was not just the most exciting, but I might even call it the highest level, highest caliber of play that we've seen. Uh, again, incredibly early on in the split. Went to three games. Game two, KT probably had no business winning, but what a bounce back from the rookie. KT perfect. That NAR performance in game three was a masterclass. Oh, and I, I got to give a shout out here because we know Piosik has leveled up throughout his time in North America. When he's the calm, cool, collected guy <laughs> on the team telling his teammates, look, you made mistakes, you're nervous, all these things. It's okay. It's all fine. We can make up for it, all these types of things. Keeping it cool, calm, cool, collected. Man, what a series. You're absolutely right. And the best thing about this is instantly, it's got me wanting more. It's like that first bite of the dish that you're like, oh, I didn't know I love this. I do. 
this is exactly what you want in the in the LCK because these two teams riding up. Of course, you've got the big Gen Gs and the T1 Hanwha Life trying to rise into there. And yes, D plus Kia and KT Rolster are certain themselves and saying, don't forget about us because we are absolutely going to bring the heat this year. Whether you're looking at either what's going on with D plus Kia and you're saying that paying attention to Lucid's growth with the team showmaker and how everything's going there. And then you can pay attention to KT Rolster and see what's going on with that squad and Mr. Perfect T getting it done on the NAR in game three. And Piosic, I mean, his first couple series, he's looked like he's in the same form that he was at for Worlds with Team Liquid, which was trying to drag an NA team out of groups to no success, but no fault of his own. He's looked fantastic and revitalized coming back and even though d plus lost this game i mean this series you can see kingan's playing aatrox like he's a world finals mvp for at least a game and then you look at aiming this guy's got like 12 cs per minute they're just fueling creeps into him for him to carry them and he's been at a pretty high level again he just got nard in that game three on the series uh, it, it can happen to the best of us in those type of situations. But yes, there's nothing out of this series that I saw between KT and D+. Plus. Teams that, again, you want to be rising up into that elite territory to show you that there are more challengers to Gen G and T1 other than just a pocket shot type of thing. You got to be rolling into a bigger into a bigger threat and seeing this type of series played out the way it was. Young players like Lucid and Perfect T expected to only get better, get more experience here in this in this early year. Looking good, LCK. If these are your potential three, four, five seeds in the LCK, this is vintage. Oh my God, everyone else is doomed if your fifth best team is winning most other leagues. Oh, it's going to be scary times for everybody coming up, seeing how these things are going to go. And I think only, and again, to talk about it, as we saw with LeBron in the LEC, to throw it a little bit back a couple minutes ago, these things are only going to get more scary as people get more familiar with the changes that came through this year, get more you know, creative with the ways that they want to approach their attacks with the changes to the terrain in the map. It's only the start of it, folks. Buckle up for 2024. One week, though, is enough to do complete sweeping overreactions. So that's exactly what we and everyone else will do. But that's it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. Thanks for hanging out with us as always. And we will catch you on that flippity flip.